Americans. I'ma need a stack. I'ma need a stack. I'ma need a stack. Yeah. I'ma need. I'ma need a rack. I'ma need a stack. I'ma need a stack. I'ma need a stack. I had to get some upbeat music because it was gonna be a completely different live. Um. The way that I have been tossed around and rejected within the last 24 hours, oh, ain't nothing nice. Okay. A little Red Bull and everything like that. Oh. I've been like really feeling Ooh, I, you know, my, my spirit has been tested within the last week or so because um, I'm going to tell you, honey, this femme lifestyle is not for everybody. It is not for the faint of heart. It is not for the people that want to just get in and get out. You know, um, that's the biggest misconception. Um... And grinder, grinder ain't nothing but the devil. Nothing but the devil. Um, let me tell you why I want to start this off with grinder. Because see, they play too much on grinder. One of the things that I have done on grinder, I have put on there my profile. I don't even put trans. I, I just put like, cause cause I noticed that like when you put those keywords, that just brings. It brings in like all the, you know, the the trans attracted and everything. Um, and when you really get on Grinder, I feel that Grinder is just a big cesspool of zombies, meth zombies, you know, meth fueled zombies. Um, and they're looking for one, two things: either BBC or meth. You know, usually meth is the the best thing that they're looking for, um, and it's 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 so tragic because like so many guys on there that says that they're that that says that they're, first of all, I'm old school. All this fucking burst top, I'm a top, but I'm I'm a top, I'm a top, and I'm straight, honey. You ain't nothing but straight to the next dick. First of all, I'm gonna just say this. All this verse top and honey, top, bottom. Either you get fucked or you don't. That just just simple as that. Simple as that. I'll, when we start complicating it. And I noticed too that what I usually do, I don't say what I am because like they always, oh, what are you into? Oh, you want me to tell you want me to tell you what I'm into. So you can basically just say the same thing. No, 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 no. You tell me what you're into. Um, I have noticed on that motherfucking app, whatever you put on there, like if I say, hey, I'm looking for alpha male, alpha male, athletic, um, no PMP, and urban from 24 to 35. I'm going to get everything that's not that. And one of the things that really makes me so mad is that the men on that app, they feel so entitled because they come they come up in my inbox and it's like, now you know you don't look like what I'm looking for. Oh, I just thought I would just try my luck. Okay, we're not compatible. Why? The fuck? Like, like, who does that? Like, okay, we're not compatible. Oh, you should give it a chance. We're not compatible, honey. You're like a hundred more pounds than what I was thinking. I mean, you have breasts. Uh, oh, I don't have breasts. I, I, I'm just like, you know, those are just like my, my chest, but I'm going to the gym. When did you go to the gym, honey? Like, Sometime like like back in the nineties, cause child, oh, yeah, I'm just like these men on that fucking app. They love to play in your face, 
And I feel that most of the guys on there, this is the image that I get from them, especially if they know that you have a BBC or you have Crystal or whatever like that. The image that I get is like, everybody, do y'all remember that um, that old Michael Jackson video, um, Thriller? You know, at the very end where they're coming through like the door and everything and they're just coming for Miss Thane and she's screaming. <laughs> What, that is the image of the men on Grinder when they know that you have a BBC or, with, or they suspect that you may have some Tina or whatever. Um, they will come at you hard body. And it's, it's just so sickening. It's, it, and, and like the guys that say they're tops, like the first thing you're asking me is, oh, how big are you? Okay, but you said you're a top and you... The first thing you want to ask is, well, don't you want to see my ass? And, you know, oh, I saw that in, you know, your profile pic. Yeah, you have beautiful eyes. I have shades on. Oh, oh, okay, well. I, and the only thing that will get them off of your back, honey, two things I noticed that will get them off your back. Basically, if you say generous. And even though generous is like, they will still kind of like be on you. Because they'll, oh, well, can I... Can, Maybe we should go out for some drinks or, you know, some dinner. I don't want to waste my time. But one thing I will tell you that will definitely get them off your back, honey. And I don't mean to stow any shade when I say this. Baby, they will go running for the hills. Put that your post off. This one guy came in there and said, oh, I bet you have a big BBC. I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm post off. Messages completely stopped. What, like three people had blocked me after I said that. Now, mind you, I'm not a post op, but I'm just saying. Um, it's been very depressing being on these apps because, like, you have to have a thick, 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 th thick skin, a very thick skin, and a very high tolerance level. Because I actually had to get off of one of the apps, and it was called Black. Um, let me go through some of these comments here. I can't FaceTime none of them. They ain't talking to me. Okay. And sometimes you gotta be careful with that FaceTime, honey. Because like, when they FaceTime me, I don't play. Yes. You're gonna get this. You're gonna get this. Because honey, I need to know that basically you're not recording me. Um, I, I always put some type of mask on. Um, and I usually have it all dark and everything. Um, but one of the things that has really shook my soul is as I'm going through this transitional period of like accepting myself or who I am and things of this nature. Oh girl, they all want the meat. Ugh. I'm a top. I'm a top. How big are you? So, I was on this app. It was called Black. It, it was it was a really nice app, but you know, I've I've come to realize that most people do not read. Period. Um, so I usually have to put in like, like in all the pictures, like, hey, I'm transgender. I'm trans. I'm trans. And when someone just asks, us, like, like we're having a conversation on the app and everything, and I'm like, hey, so you've been with the trans before? What's that? Block. Um, most guys say that they read, but they don't not, they, they, they don't read at all. And um, the entitlement thing that I'm starting to notice is like, I feel like as we're moving to 2020, we need to be more about like, okay, if you're gonna if if, if you're going to pitch in for this, if, if we're gonna go on a date or whatever like that, hey, let's let's make it fair. Let's make it fair. Um I can drive my own car, you can drive your own car, and hey, we can pay our own way. Bam. You know what I'm saying? Um But the problem comes in when I offer, because I'm a I'm a very good hearted person. Like 
this dude that I have hung out with before, um, I was doing Postmates. And um, that's another thing. Postmates is getting really shady, honey. Um, I'm just explaining that again. I was doing Postmates and I was out and I told, hey, you know what? I'm in your area, so if you want, I can come pick you up and, you know, we can come chill. I got some weed. So he was like, okay, um, hurry up. Because that. What? The, hurry up. Don't you mean thank you? Yes, he's he he was he's a big size, but I, when I tell you people, I'm starting to despise BBC men because they have a type of aura about them, and I'm like, okay, I can be there by this certain time. Now, let me ask you something, because you know I'm not gonna drive all the way like 25 minutes or so to come and get you, and then you're gonna be out in and out. No, hell no. I can get a rent man for that. Um, so then he's like, oh, um, just text me. That's a, another thing. Like, ugh, I, 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 I really hate how this technology is going because it's like, people can't talk, people can't have conversations. I'm like, all it takes is like less than 60 seconds for us to get on the phone and say, okay, I'm on my way. Oh, by the way, what are you into? Oh, you're into that? Okay, cool. You know, um, how long are you going to stay? Okay, cool. Bam. All this back and forth. You know, W-I-D. This, and, and it's just like, my battery's running low because you cannot text. Because you only can text. And then when we get on the phone, it's like, every other word is a yeah, uh-huh, yeah. And you're so socially awkward. And it's no wonder that you have a big dick because... That's the only thing, that's the only substance that you have about you because you can't hold a conversation. You can't even, oh, oh God. So basically I'm telling him this stuff and he's like, why don't you just like come through now? And I'm like, why don't you pick up your phone? Oh, I forgot. Your phone is um, on. Your phone is on low battery, so that's why you have to text. But yeah, we've been texting for like the last ten minutes, and my battery is going low. Um, all this complications, and as I'm going through this with this person, I'm like saying to myself, like, I haven't even asked you for gas. I'm doing this as a favor for you, and you're making up a big stink. And I haven't heard thank you one time. And then he says, "Oh, you're being all extra." Just, you know, it's, it's, it's a done. <sighs> Mind you, this, this, this comes, this comes after, um, I started two conversations on the black app today and halfway through the conversation, like, we're going to go to Olive Garden and all this stuff. And I, I always have to ask the question, Hey, you been with the trans girl before? It actually says transgendered Chanel on the profile. Oh, oh, I thought that was like, like you were like a transcontinental, like airport steward. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay. So what I'm trying to say, and, and it's not all about dick size, it's, it's, it's all about a lot of men, they're not used to, they're not used to being put in their place. And when I tell them about themselves, I'm, I tell them, okay, so, so you want me to come pick you up, bring you back to my house, and then take you back by a certain time, and you're not giving no gas money? Honey, you need to break me off with something. I, I, what? Why do you need to be picked up? You, I live right next to the fucking train. You know, you have two feet. Oh, but you're the one that wants dick. Honey, yes, I want dick. I, I'm a human. Yes, of course I want dick. I'm being shamed for that. I'm being shamed for being sexually liberated. Oh, God forbid. But the fact of the matter is, is that you have a job, but you can't take Uber. Because you don't have a credit card. Okay, motherfucker. 
you can get a fucking Uber gift card from Rite Aid. You don't need a credit. It's just like all this complications. And I feel like a lot of this happens because of the, the, the trans thing. The, the, that, that title. That, that title of being trans. And they feel like they can bring second best to us. And I've seen it happen. I, I, I'm like... Oh, I told you we were going out, and you, nigga, are you wearing, are you, are you wearing pajama pants over here? Oh, well, I mean, we weren't going out nowhere. And when I point out things like this, people tell me that I'm being extra, but my deserve level is raising a lot higher this year, and as I'm starting not to put up with certain things, I'm also starting to realize that energy, my energy and your energy needs to like, it needs to be hand in hand because I'm starting to get to the point where I'm having little psyche, I'm having little mental, emotional breakdowns because I will admit having all this careless sex with random people um, is starting to wear on me because of the fact that there's no connection. And then when there's no connection, there's no appreciation, there's no commit, there, there's no obligation. So, yes. We just had sex three times, and I don't even know that this is your rule, that you only fuck trannies three times because the fact that you say if you fuck a tranny more than three times, then you're gay. Okay, well, nigga, you ain't straight either, but that's a whole totally different... And see, the black community, I'm, I'm gonna tell you this, this is where... This is another thing. I'm trying to get this off my chest because I really can't really talk about this about most people. And I feel that this is where the blacks really get it fucked up. When I bring things up like this, oh, why are you bringing up old shit? I'm bringing up old shit because that's the same shit that comes up every time because we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. You know what black folks like to do? You see this right here? This is a rug. This is what black folks like to do. They like to sweep it under the rug. That's what they like to do. You know why Holiday Heart was a, such a successful film? You know why people love that film? I love myself some Holiday Heart. Yes, baby, I love Holiday Heart. Because this is how most black people have this unrealistic view of GLBTQ people. They don't see us with a sexuality. They feel like we're there to, you know, to be entertainment. A kiki, you know, ha 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 ha, he he he, you know. Um, and it's a shame that Van Rams did not get an Oscar for that role, because um, she played the fuck out of that role. But the fact of the matter is, is that Holiday Hart really didn't have a sexuality. You know, I mean, yeah, he had a lover in the in the same, but very very briefly. And I've noticed like the black community is very much like that, like, you know. Oh, do what you do, but do, do, do behind closed doors. Okay, well, can you do your heterosexual stuff behind closed doors, too? I mean, hey, it's all the same. And I'm just saying that I feel like that's very... When we sweep things under the rug, when we don't talk about things, when we don't put things out in the open, that, that's where it starts all this stigma and all this DL culture shit. You know, um, and it's very problematic. And I'm starting to realize I cannot be with... DL men anymore. I, my safety is my concern. You know, because I've come to the... Honey, all you motherfuckers can sit here and say, oh, my pussy stick. Oh, he's still with a woman. You know, I'm, transgender women are... Wi transgender women are biologically male and they can identify as women. Hey, shoot the messenger. That is, I, I'm, I'm going with that. I'm going to stay with that. But that does not give you the right to sit there and like, hey, so what's up? You know, uh, yeah, that's the homeboy. Okay. You're going to call, uh, I, I have a term and I say to myself, like, 
you can use whatever pronouns you want to use with me but if I actually tell you and I say this is what I prefer to use then and you decide to use another pronoun then I just make a mental note and I say oh, okay this is a disrespectful motherfucker so I know how I'm gonna handle you that's that's how, that's how I'm gonna like look at that because I really don't get bent up out of shape about this but the black community having this swept under the rug thing that is problematic and that's also what causes this straight thing like a guy I'm um, talking about he's straight but he swallows more cum than a fucking <clears throat> a fucking power bottom at a West Hollywood cum dump party but you talking about you straight you talking about you straight but the first thing you want to do when you come over and see the girls honey you're not grabbing for the boobs. You're going for the cock. You want to see how hung it is. And you have this unrealistic view of how the girls are. You want them to look like Sydney Star. And you want them to get hard like fucking um, Jason Love or, or um, Brian Pumper. Well, no, no. Child, I'm not hearing that he's uh, been messing with that stuff. And you know. Mm. erectile dysfunction but y'all need to understand something you trans attracted men one thing is gonna give either she's gonna look like big dick dana and she's gonna fuck you like a jason love a, you know or a, like a black bull or she's going to look like a sydney star and you may get a bottom out of her or whatever. Like, I mean, this unrealistic view is, and, and it's like, oh, I was, oh, you, you, you can't get hard? No, motherfucker, I can't get hard because I take fucking hormones, honey. I'm not trying to jeopardize my, oh, yeah. I'm just realizing, like, so many things that are just working against, like, the, that whole identity and, you know, <sighs> Tanya, you said you're sweeping me under the rug. Well, I have a suggestion. How about you put yourself in the wastebasket? Mm-hmm. See, people, when people make comments like that, they want to be seen. They want to be seen. Because I always say to myself, if you're going to delete somebody, just delete them. You know what I'm saying? You know, wh why you got to make an announcement? I'm deleting you, girl. I don't like what you... Fuck you, bitch. <laughs> delete me. Shit. Why you got to make an announcement about it? I'm sweeping you under the rug for 2020. Well, bitch, let me help you with that, Miss Tanya Fox, honey. Hmm. Ciao. Let me, let me go ahead and help you with that invitation, bitch. Give you one good old invitation to my block party. The party that always opens you with open arms, honey. Mm. And that's another thing. Y'all be coming on people's lives. Talking about. And making suggestions what they should do and everything like that. I'm like, you know... You should talk about this. You should. Uh, bitch, this is not Facebook only. Or, bitch, are you paying a subscription fee or something? You know, I, I'm, I'm just like, uh, honestly. And even then, like, I've seen, like, some of you girls that, that have the fans only and everything. And I see how the subscribers talk to you. And I, I, I'm, I'm, that couldn't be me. I, that, no, no. -uh. Yeah, I have a suggestion. You know, I, I you should probably start bringing more people. We want to see you at three. No. Because, uh -uh -uh. like, with me, even when I run my business, when I do what I do, Postmates or whatever like that, I run my business the way I run my business. That's how, like, been an independent contractor. Because at any given moment and any given time, if I don't like how things are going, I can say, okay, this is not for me. Um, and that's just how I've been. I've, I've always been like that. Um, yes, yes, Mojo. I, I definitely believe that. Um, I definitely believe that <clears throat> it's very 
it's funny that you asked that, Mojo, because like I'm starting to move a whole lot differently this this year. Cause I went to my spiritual advisor and she was talking about like, you gotta be really careful about even like, you know, these men is that be coming over there, you know, and you and 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 you meet me. Um, you're swallowing them and it, I, I don't be swallowing everything. everybody ain't good to swallow well baby hey, everybody ain't good to be bringing in your house and everything. okay I get that but she started breaking it down and she was like saying that even like if someone releases on you or whatever you know that energy and all that toxicality from that energy releases on to you and mind you you, you don't know what they've been dealing with and this is one of the reasons why I cannot, I, I'm moving forward, I, I can't get, if a guy, first thing that's coming out of his mouth is like, I'm straight, I'm, honey, well you can be straight out that door, because that that type of emotional toxic, that type of emotional dis- detachment has been really taxing on me, really taxing on me, um, and, I, and I will tell you, it's, it, it is an addiction, you know. It's, it's definitely an addiction because these men, you know, there's a saying that you know when they they always come back. They really do. I mean, they're worse than HIV and cancer all together because they keep coming back. Like, nigga, no, I'm not fucking with you anymore. Okay, okay. And if they know they have good dick and everything, they will definitely come back. And it's like. When you come back and I let you back in and you do the same thing over and over again. Um, because you feel that your dick is, or your your energy that you give is just like so great. But like I said, it's getting to the point where I can't allow men to come in my life and then walk out of my life. Because it's getting emotionally taxing to me. Um, it's making me a very different person. Because like, I hate to say it, you know. I look at, you know, the girls like, you know, um, look at the girls like, who's a good example? Um, I look at someone like, um, Dick Frida. You know, now her and her man, they have been together for years, honey. And for what anyone can say, Big Frida, Miss Thane, she is doing her. She is Big Frida. And, um, people love Big Frida. You know, I'm um, especially fit. I love me some Big Frida because he know he a man. He know, and I love it. And in a lot of ways, Big Frida is kind of like a real life holiday heart. Listen to what I say when I say this because you know, her music is not really, um, it's not sexually fueled. It's kind of like for everyone. Um, and even her TV show and everything like that. But she lives a very happy, abundantly life from what we see. Um, and as I'm getting older and everything, I'm, I'm, I'm realizing that it's, 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 it's becoming very taxing to me that I allow you to come through. I allow you to have a, th- a free therapy session with me where you tell me your problems. You express all your stuff. And then, when I'm going through my trauma, I don't have, oh, it's like your ghost. You're available when you're available, and I stop what I'm doing. Um, and, and that's, that's extremely hard. Um, cause It's not so much that I think that we're attracted to the dick or whatever. We're attracted to the attention. We're attracted to the companionship. And I'm going to tell you one thing. The thing that has been so hard for me and why I've been coming down with this breakdown and I've been kind of clingy like this is because of the fact that I have my rabbits and everything like this, but I still miss her, Zara. I really do. My first dog as uh, an adult. And unlike the other dogs I've had in my life that come in and out of the revolving door and they leave their fleas and stuff like that and they come with rabies and it's, yeah. Um, this dog here, 
was genuinely, authentically, you know, gave me unconditional love. And um, I seek that with, I, I think I subconsciously seek that with some of these men and I realized that some of them are just not capable of doing that because they have emotional detachment issues. Um, and that's the biggest thing about like when you're dealing with urban men, you're dealing with men that are, you know, they were raised by a single parent or so, you know, where, and I, I'm kind of almost comfortable with the fact that I'm going to be by myself, but I'm not comfortable with that fact. Oh, I will tell you this, Mojo. The sisterhood that was on Tea Time with the girls, the sisterhood that was out there on the East Coast, y'all need to cherish that. Type of sisterhood does not exist out here. It's very cliquish. Um, people are, you know, they, they fuck with who they fuck with. And I can say that the thing that really hurt me the most is that I kind of brought that same energy from New York from out here. No, 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 no. <laughs> I got, I got, I gotta let them know. Very okay. I'm on the set of, wait for it, wait for it. Let's see, let's see. Girls, Hi. Tea Time Live. Hi. Tea Time LA. Tea Time LA. Yes. Hey. That's right, we're doing Tea Time LA. I'm the executive producer. I am not going to be on the panel, so you can't read me. You can read them. So I just, just wanted to let you girls know that we are putting together like all of this stuff for Tea Time LA. We just got through shooting our first taping. It was like everything, wasn't it, Miss Maya? Yes, it was. Yes, Had a lot of fun. Lots of lots of fun. Miss Maya, sweet cakes, honey. Yes. <laughs> yes. We right here with the, you know, the famous Fox Giselle, honey. It's going down. Y'all do not want to miss this. See, it's going to be all the fucking chain, you guys. Tea Time LA. Tea Time LA. I'm going to subscribe on the Tea Time Network. Follow. It's coming. I'm telling y'all, y'all ain't going to miss that to blow. It's about to blow. I'm yes. sorry. Yeah. Do you girls want to say anything for... Yes. Okay. For the Tea Time LA people. I just want to say... Luna. Bitch, why you hating? All fraudulent <laughs> and shit. <laughs> I'm just well, for starters, I would like to honestly congratulate Fox Giselle on all no, her great success. No, this is about, success. No, this no, is about you. Is about because you. Because we would not be here if it was not for you. And all honesty, I want people to understand how serious she is about the trans community. And I, I truthfully feel like she's a great activist for our community because there was no one else that is seriously taking the next level and what it takes right. is for us to understand that there are girls that relate to us there are girls that want to be a part of the community that don't know how to communicate in an adult environment you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but it's people like her that genuinely want the best and they want to actually see us be successful people in the community Look at you know what i'm saying so and, and shout out to yeah, yeah. Come come on. On. Yeah. Yeah. And when I was doing Tea Time LA, I heard from another cast member that, yeah, Miss Thames, she was like saying, yeah, Fox just always calls me about she's going through this with this trade. And girl, I don't give a fuck about all that, girl. Girl, I'm just like, I, Miss Thames. And, and fuck it. And I'm like saying to myself, okay, oh, really, Gia Banks? This is how you feel? Really? Really? You know what I'm saying? Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm your sis every time you came to Brooklyn, which happened to be around the ball. I'm your sis then. Um, it's, it's, it, it's very, very, like, heavy on the soul. Because, like, I am a loner. I am a loner. Um, and that made me really pull back. 
because now I can't I can't be sisterhood because like everybody in LA you know it's it's very much like a girl will look at it and go, yeah girl I'm down I'm down I'm coming I'm coming yes bitch yeah. and you you don't know if she's it's it's oh it's so oh I will say this. I'm not going to shit on L.A. completely because, like, L.A., I've made way more money here in L.A. because there's so many different incomes and things of that nature to do. Um, if you can get past the the counter fitness and things of that nature, which is actually quite easy because, like I said, the river's not real. People Right there. This is Healy. This is Healy. Why can't anybody hear me? Because these aren't real people. It's like Los Angeles. Oh. It's not real, but it does get lonely. Um, and you don't have that sisterhood. Um, I don't know. It's it's like going to the going to the CMA meetings and like I'm going to go get clean at the CMA meeting, and basically I'm going to go get and and. Having girls coming up to you because you're the only tranny in the CMA meeting saying, girl, can you, um, can you give me some stuff? What in, what in the crystal meth anonymous is going, wait a minute. We were, didn't you just get up there and give that speech about how you were seven years clean? Yes, girl, but I got an image to keep up and plus my job and it, wow. Wow. This is like... This For the past 17 years, Obamacare has wreaked havoc on the lives of innocent, hardworking Americans. 17 years. The only thing that has wreaked havoc is your obvious lack of mathematical skills. How could a, a bill that was signed in 2010 like be around for 17 years? Anyways, I digress. Wow. Oh my fucking God. But it's not surprising. It's definitely not surprising. Um, I think what's so taxing is that people tell you all these things about, oh, you should do this. You should, you know, you should just like, you. oh, you do that because you don't love yourself. Okay, how do I love myself? Oh, you just, you know, put down the, you put down the drugs and everything and you know, okay, all right, cool. That, that sounds great. And by day two, you know, Okay, we're, we're doing good here. By day three, withdrawal and, you know, you're having yearnings and stuff like that. And, you know, if you make it to day number four, if you make it to day number four, because, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but there is a sickness that goes on um, when you are trying to get clean and everything like that. But if you make it to number four, then you have to deal with the whole atmosphere because you live in drug-infused high area. Where girls will come and knock at your door and say, hey, um, guess who's in town? Oh, I'm not making up any excuses or anything like that. But I feel like going to CMA and NA, I love the fellowship, but I feel like they have a very unrealistic view of how the world works. Because people, places, and things, you can't ignore people, places, and things. One person told me this years ago, I was going to her Christmas party. And I told her, I said, hey, you know, I'm clean right now. So I was like wondering if you could like just put the alcohol like somewhere. Mind you, I'm not an alcoholic. And she looked at me like, now, I appreciate the fact you're getting clean and everything, honey. But you need to, baby, you need to understand people do not work around your, like, your program. You have to work around other people's program." And the people, places, and things, honey, they're going to always be around. I was like, oh, okay, so is that like saying that? Hell no, bitch, I'm going to get lit just because you can't handle your alcohol. Baby, that's your problem. If you don't want to come to my party, bitch, you know, you don't have to come. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to change my... So I, I understood that. I understood that. And I don't. I think that's what people don't understand. Like when they go into these like little things like that, you know, yes. Yeah, but you need to be prepared for the what if. And the fact that you are 
you are a token person in a community that people automatically assume that if you don't know where to get the stuff from, you know somebody knows where to get the stuff from. Bitch, go ask that tranny over there. Oh, girl, I'm, 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 I'm clean. I'm, I'm, no, Miss Dang. Come on, girl, don't do me like that. I'm like, no, I do not know where to get the stuff from. I, c- come on, I, 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 can you not do this to me? <laughs> Miss Dang, girl, stop playing with me, girl. Girl, here's the bill, honey. Girl, I will give you some, and I will, yeah, but I need, girl, I need a fix, girl, and I know, I know the trannies know where you can get the stuff at. Ugh. I have a hard road ahead of me, because not only that, I have realized I, I can't, I can't function on Grinder. I cannot function on Grinder. It's too many distractions on Grinder. Um, there's no real tops on Grinder. If you do come across a top um, that looks like a top, he's usually a top for men only. Yeah. Um, it's oh my god! It's it's so. It's like um. In. One of the things I've noticed, too, is, like, I'm so used to, like, getting so many L's. Like, when people message me online, okay, he looks good. He, wait a minute. He looks good. He's not on meth. He's, uh, what does he want? I have to always ask that. What does he want? You know, um, that, I think that affects me a great deal. And I think that affects a lot of trans people or just people in period. I cannot have a healthy relationship because of the fact that um, I have this thing to where I run people away. You know? Um, I'm going to tell you everything about myself that will get you running for the hills. If things are going too well, then honey, I feel in the back of my mind that you about to get me for something. You about to steal something? You about to turn me out or something? So, you know what? Let's make this easy here. Um, yeah, I take meds. No, no, not those types of meds. I take crazy meds. And I have, like, illusions of, like, detachment issues. Like, if a guy gets with me, he puts a really good dick on me. And then all of a sudden, he ghosts me. You know, I, I may, like... You know, stab him one time or so because, you know, I don't want him. You know, I just make up shit and it's self-sabotage because at the end of the day, I don't believe that that is something that is worthy for me. I still don't believe that. I believe that, first of all, I believe that most of the men, most of the millennial men, their IQ level and their intellectual comprehension and things of that nature makes them on a level to where um, even if I dumb myself down like three, five levels down, I'm still not going to be on their level. And that's where the problem comes in because I can only play dumb for so long to where even like my, okay, I know what you're doing. You're basically trying to play the victim. So you can use that against me and you know I'm trans so you're telling me all this bullshit, you know, so you can have it as leverage. I know they're good. And no matter how clever they do it, they're never going to admit it. They're never going to, because their ego is not going to let them admit that this person that I think is less than me just clocked my teeth. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ride it till the wheels fall off. And that's something that is, um, I, I find very problematic. Uh, something that... <sighs> okay, you, you, you have a house, okay. But you're always coming to my place. Wait a minute. Don't you have a house? I mean, why are you always... Oh, I sold the house. Okay, alright. So, can you Uber here? I don't have any money. Can you come pick me... Didn't you just sell your house? And it gets to the point where 
I have to sell myself. Okay, what's the bigger picture? You're a lonely ass bitch with a whole bunch of cats and guinea pigs and non rabbits. And you really can't get no dick because you come from this mindset of that there's a scarcity. And actually, due to the fact that you are kind of like on the loony side, there is a scarcity because of the fact that you are a very complex bitch. However, um, what's the bigger picture here? You want to get this dick that's going to come through here and it's going to satisfy you for tonight? Or you want to get back on Grinder and go through... Tina Dick number one, Tina Dick number two, Tina Dick number three, you know, and possibility that they're gonna snatch something out. And, and first of all, I'm not fucking with Grinder no more. Mm, mm mm. I'm not doing that. Um, if anything, I feel like if I had my choice of like saying, if, if I could take a pill to get rid of either. Um, you know, the Tina addiction or to get rid of my dick addiction, I would get rid of the dick addiction. I really would. I would just become asexual. You know, because without the dick addiction, then there's less fuel for Tina. See, I think about things like that. Um, I also think about to myself that it's just like this is and, and, I, and I'm not depressed, but I'm not, like, in the best happy state. Like, when I hear things about, like, the, like, that disease that's going out, like, the airborne, and I say to myself, like, oh, it's instant? Like, like you, there's no suffering? I, I, I'm, I'm being completely, authentically honest here. I don't like the way our society is going. I, I honestly feel that I get more depressed with the fact that I have to deal with robots more and I'm even smarter than the robots. I Like when I'm dealing with Postmates and I know how to put certain things in, the, oh, okay, so there's a loophole here to where I can order this and order this and this person may not get this, but oh, I just had my lunch paid for me. You know, I'm not a dishonest person, but hey, baby, I just did five deliveries and I'm already putting gas back in my car. And that's another thing. Postmates is very shady. Very, very shady. And this is why, hey, if anybody has the referral for Instacart, I'm on, the way, I'm on two people's waiting lists for Instacart. I need that. Um, but I'm going to tell you something about Postmates. And this kind of relates to a lot of things. When you think that certain things are systematically put in place for you to fail, nine times out of ten, that is probably right. Um, Postmates has this thing on there where they are saying, hey, complete ten deliveries from 5 to 9 p.m. And you get a $100 bonus. So that's great, right? You know, you do all these deliveries and... You know, you get tips and things of that nature, which actually goes right back into the gas if you have a V8 engine like me. Um, I don't know any dumbass that would be driving Postmates with a V8 sports car that, you know, drinks up gas like a white man drinks up BBC Kong. Um, so, just put, get that uncomfortable image out of your head. What I'm trying to say, and I thought it, I thought it was just like I met my imagination. Okay, five o'clock to nine p.m. Get ten deliveries. So seven o'clock comes. I'm like at eight deliveries. I'm like, oh cool. I'm gonna get that hundred. I'm spinning in my head. Seven o'clock comes, and on the Postmates app, there's like little shaded areas that you can go to, and usually those shaded areas is where it's supposed to be highly populated, very busy. Very busy. So I'm driving through this area, wasting even more gas. And I'm not getting no rings. 8.30 comes. Now, I'm at eight deliveries. I only need two more. And mind you, Postmates works very much like the Uber app. Like, you don't know where you're going until you, until the customer gets in there. So anyways, um, and you have to complete these all by 9 o'clock. So I get the delivery and it's 8.30 and I'm like, oh, okay, 
cool Wendy's and a lot of items on here. And then I start noticing, ooh, I'm going up here in the high desert area. Wow, this is, oh, gated community. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going up in the mountains. And then I get through with that delivery and it's like 9, 10. And I'm like, wow, okay. You know, I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. Happened two more times. Went online and I found out that yes. It, yeah. <laughs> Postmates ain't gonna be posting me and making a fool out of me too many more times. I, but they they, 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 they they had me. They really had me, honey. I was running around like Speedy Gonzalez, honey. Doing all those goddamn deliveries, bitch. And, ugh. Well, I'm gonna say this. Um, BBC, men in general, Oh my God, I'm, 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 I'm getting so disenchanted with men and it's changing my mind frame. Um, it's making me to a person that I don't want to be because I feel that a lot of guys here, especially in LA, are so dismissive. Um, it's like they're so quick to just shoot you off because you are just a number. He has a big dick and everything like that. He has about six, seven other girls that are pleading to him for his dick or whatever. And, you know, they don't give him any mouth or anything because of the fact that they usually lack the substance, the intelligence, um, <sighs> the education. Um, but they look pretty, you know. Like my girlfriend, no, well, ex-girlfriend Kimmy. You know, one thing I can say about her is that she's pretty. And that's all you need. Be pretty. Be pretty. Now that will last you from the age of 23 up until 30. Um, if you can get some good face lifts or so like that, maybe a little bit longer. But um, yeah, um, that that is the main concern here with most guys. Um, and it's it's very taxing on my soul because of the fact that when I was in my 20s, I wanted a boyfriend, and I did get a boyfriend. You know, after I bought him a car, because I did not have the self-esteem to think that he was going to stick around with me that long. I feel like a lot of self-belief systems that I have are going to endanger my relationship status and also being to the fact that I've been tainted and I've been damaged to the point where... Um, I just don't believe that a lot of men are really genuine people, especially in this generation at all. I've, I've seen, I've, I've, I've seen guys put on really good fronts, um, and only to basically do it for something, for an incentive or something, and... You know, one thing I will say that men get real about, they get real about their kids, they get real about their money. But when it comes to someone that they have no relation to, or, you know, they lack empathy and things of that nature. I mean, if it's something that's linked to the fact that you get a paycheck or whatever like that, and that's just how it is. That That's just how it is. Um, that's just how LA life is. I mean, I just have, I can't think of that many girls, well, women, that are in past the age of like 40, 50 that have a relationship. And I just want to say some of this to some of you older girls that are watching this. Um, you talk about the fact that, oh, I, I don't deal with no man. I'm about my money. I'm about my money. Okay, that's cool and everything. But at the end of the night, um... When your bed is cold and you have no pets, is this going to keep you warm? Okay? Um, when you say you don't deal with men, oh, that's why I don't deal with them. And, uh. So what do you do to basically... What do you do to get your fix? And that's what... that's I, 
that's where I feel that a lot of the older women, you know, they, I don't feel that you guys keep it real with us. You know, and you set... Well, most times I feel like some of the girls are setting themselves up for failure anyways the minute that they take a hormone pill. But that's a whole nother thing. But I've seen how men treat women. Um, today's men are not the men of my grandfather, of my father. Um, they're really not men at all. I mean, they're like placeholders. I mean, they, they're, they're people that are out for self. And, and people can say that I'm being like bitter or whatever. I know how to crystal bend and everything. But the fact of the matter is, is that most people are out for self. Really. And I, 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 I hate to say that, but yes, most people are out for self. Um, it's not about the trans or whatever. If you're a trans and you have money or you have status, you will, hey, I know a couple of boys that I had when I was on the, you know, the top thing, and, you know, but I don't know. I think that's one of the things that makes me like say to myself like, oh, if there's an airborne disease that could take me out just like that, I would. Because I really don't like the society that we're going to and the fact that we're becoming even more introverts. You know, everything's on apps. And then when you do get a customer service person, it's, oh, it's someone from the Philippines that is like a robot. I mean, uh, hi, welcome, this is Amazon. My fire stick isn't working. I'm sorry to hear that. Your fire stick is not... <sighs> but, you know, um, people talk about these things about... Yeah, I think there's this campaign going around like, oh, the White House can, you know, now making it to where they can fire a transgender person. We need to start raising the rights and... I'm like, well, how is that any different than when you're in the community and you're getting blackballed? Or when you're just not nice, genuine people and you get hired for all types of things because of the fact you know this person, that person, this person, you know? And the fact that people have this perception that you do good work, but you're not a genuine person. And when it comes down to it, you being genuine and everything, it, it does not matter. It does not matter. I'm, I'm just so depressed. Oh, God. Ah. And I'm going to just say this, people. I don't know how people like MJ Harris, um, uh, these other like social bloggers can just keep it all up and happy. I, I, I don't know. And, and like I said, when living out here in Hollywood... Um, I know there's all types of buffoonery and Janet Jackson um, foolery going on, but people keep up with it. People that are naturally happy. I, I, I don't, I don't know if I buy it, but I just, I'm just saying it, it's, If you can be naturally happy without any type of stimulants, coffee, tea, or whatever like that, please. You need to you need to be doing what MJ Harris and all these other girls and Tom, Tony Robbins were doing. Thing that I just don't think that happens. I like I. Said,